old mammalian and your new mammalian brain. <clears throat> the new mammalian making up the entirety of your cerebral cortex. <clears throat> anyway, so the argument break out that the one known as Enlil, who was um, um, assigned as the ruler of the Earth Command of Military Contingent, he wasn't the ruler of the nature of the um, development of the planet. He was the ruler of the military aspect of securing the resources required, but he wanted the 50th seat. And so he's argued that the male gods were superior. The result of this was that to prove them wrong, they said because Enki can make a baby in a test tube and produce this child and plant it, and plant it in a womb, that it made the male god superior because they can make babies without the aid of a woman. And she, her argument was that no, you still needed the woman for a um, tool of gestation. So you can't get away from that. So this brought their goal to producing a child, a human, um, for the effort. And this human would have to be created outside of a, the aid of a woman then this is your Adam made from the dust of the ground because it was already we was already here so when they came down and they tried it several times and failed she told them she could produce a male child um, without the aid of a man this had never been done before that they were aware of but the male came from the female in similar fashion males became permanent males due to deep space radiation and space exploration and then the y chromosome developed as a mutated x so she came back to earth in the halls of the sacred halls of atlantis and she spoke to um what we call cycle masters or the seven um, um, no, it was nine. It's the Ennead in, um, Egypt. And they told her that by her being queen of heaven and earth, if she made that choice, that it would be her choice, but that the male gods would feel slighted because she was able to produce a male child without the aid of a male. And she said, how can they feel slighted when they say that I cannot produce um, a male child unless I had sex with a man. She said, I don't need their filthy seminal fluids. I can produce a male child on my own. And so by parthogenesis, she produced a male child in, in your biblical text, they call him the Christ. In um, India, they say he was the Buddha born of the lotus. Um, some people say he was brought by the stork and that's where the stork story come from. But at the end of the day, she was able through the aid of parthogenesis to access parts of her X chromosome that's determinative of the sex of the child. And not only was she able to do that, she was able to, um, activate two X chromosomes to produce a XY product. And when she done it, they were irate. So the one we call Enlil is your Yahweh in the Old Testament. But Yahweh is the 50th seat. And it's the master of the good and the evil. Or as they would say, the masculine and the feminine. The divine masculine is responsible for your rage and um, aggression. Yep. This is where they got man better than a woman from. It was a war between what they call the gods. They not really gods because they've never been more powerful than the humans that developed on Atlantis. The problem was is that um, 
the they were allowed to be infiltrated in Atlantis in the CERN machine like they have now, which is a collider particle accelerator, was used to collapse the fourth dimension in on the third in order to slight her and capture what they called the daughters. Well, they was an androgynous being in the um, fourth dimension. They didn't have gender because they didn't have sex. Um, they um, merge like uh, cells together, and when they separated, uh, the byproduct would be a third. And this is also part of why the Trinity idea is so strong. So her son developed here in the priestly temples of the Ennead, learning all of the sciences and technologies, and um, the word got back to Nibiru on its return that she had produced a child, a clean, immaculate birth. And what that mean, immaculate conception, mean that, that she produced him without seminal fluids. There was no genetic material exchange for her to produce this male child. He wasn't regular because none of them, none of them can mess with him. And they used to make fun of him because he had a lot of earthly traits that they call primate or monkey traits. Um, <clears throat> there were no more monkey traits than any other human, but that was their um, um, mockery of him. And he also had a tail. So, um, the tail was from her absorbing energy out of the primate field because that's where um, the human species was dominantly drawn from. And this is your RH positive. The minority was drawn from the reptilian, which is your RH negative, which is most compatible with the genome or the DNA sequence of the invaders. So as the queen of heaven and earth was sitting there talking to the king of the gods, um, in comes her brother once he discovered that she had made a male child and he was irate. And so as the, the legend has it, his voice shook the heavens as he spewed his rage. That's figurative because he did have a heavy voice. Enlil mean Lord of the voice. And that's why I say in the Old Testament he had a voice like many waters. There's talking about Enlil. Enki was what they call Poseidon in um, Greek mythology because he was um, stationed under the water. Um, Enlil is the one who uses the symbol of the eagle. Um, and Enki used the symbol of the reptile. And Inanna, or Isis's son, used the symbol of various primates around the world. And he used, in ancient Egypt, the baboon. And, um, and um, he used various simian monkeys in the Far East. And he is the one that they call the son of man. Now, y'all got to understand this, too. The Christ, they call him Jesus in the Bible. The Christ is not a man. Y'all got to understand that part. Because the church have y'all thinking that Jesus Christ is a man. And that's not true. Jesus is two people whose words are in red. It's the son and his mother. It's what they call Isis and Heru. They the ones talking in the red. That's why one minute there's a warrior talking, the next minute there's this all loving person talking. Those are two different people. You would never know unless you had like forensic profiling research done, and then you would understand that's what's taking place in your biblical text. When you go to Revelations, you'll see that the Son of Man is crowned King of King and Lord of Lords by the Christ who comes from heaven as a bride adorned for her groom. Hey, Alicia, how you doing? So 
is telling you she's the Christ is coming like a bride. Is he a cross dresser? No. This is because they're not telling you the story. They know the story. And they don't want to tell you the story. So they give it to you in pieces like Mary. Mary is actually the name of the mother, which means rebellious woman. But it wasn't her name. It was what they called her in mockery. So they called him the son of man in mockery because he was born of a woman without the aid of a man. And they call her Mary, which means the rebellious woman out of mockery because she was able to produce this male child without their permission or anything. She was able to do it successfully without their semen. So they advanced for what they call the high seat of heaven or uh, other galactic council 50. The king of the gods rallied the troops and the war ensued. Now, the war is described best in the Gita in India, where Arjuna is talking to Krishna and he's asking them about the war in heaven. So for a period of time, um, the entire Galactic Council bound all of us to earth in human form to experience life as a human. So we all trapped in the human body and we all are going through the Kali Yuga, the sleep state of the guy. So we don't even know who we are. We think we just like everybody else, but we not. Until we wake up and then we realize, holy crap, I'm something different. I ain't like everybody else. What the hell is this? And anyway, never knowing that these agreements start the wake up process when they sincere. And um, so I said I would move heaven and earth. The 50th galactic seat was vacant for the last 2,000 years. That means that only thing that ruled was judgment. The judgment was that um, those created in Babylon in what they call the mud ball, Okay, let's go over the mud ball. This order to produce male children or children, period, without a womb, they needed a way to transfer the mitochondrial from the earth's soil into a developing fetus. And this is why they say man was formed from the dust of the earth. And um, the Quran is say he was born from resounding black mud. But that's not exactly how it goes. That's part of the story. That's not the whole story. What they did was dredge the white and the blue Nile, Tigris and Euphrates River. And this is the most fertile and the richest soil on earth. And it has the deepest concentration of, um, of earth mitochondrial in it. The problem came in is when they tried to conceal it, instead of using the correct carbon, carbon atoms, what we call it melanin, and when it wants to get in the system, it becomes melanin. But you can use carbon in its free state to facilitate the attachment of the placenta into the clay ball or um, this potter's wheel or potter's clay is what it's called when Kansu is forming the human. He's actually forming the artificial clay uterus in which the energy would be drawn in order for this child to be able to absorb the um, mitochondrial, sync with the vibration of earth so it can inhabit here. It couldn't live here if it didn't have this element of the earth. So that's why nothing on earth can live if it doesn't have mitochondrial. You can go in. I don't know. You can go check. Mm -mm. Okay, so now this is when they say an atom was formed from the dust of the earth. Now, what did they form? It's called a ghulam in um, uh, occultism. And they're removing as much information about the ghulam as they can from all over the world. They're trying to conceal it now because I done started to expose 
what they did in the dirt that they laid down. So now they're trying to clean it up by not allowing you to see what a ghoulam is. The ghoulam is a clay figure or form that they make and they use incantation. So that's why I say and God blew the breath of life into him. It was an incantation to activate the mitochondrial that was concealed in the sulfur once the being was developed to a certain level in this clay ball. And so um, this was the war in heaven. So because the 50th seat was vacant, any grail king who woke up did his due diligence and swore his allegiance to the crown of heaven by determining to put things back in order had the opportunity. But all of us didn't make it. Matter of fact, most of us didn't make it. And matter of fact, only one of us made it. And the Highlander, there can be only one. So as that war took place, Everybody was bound, the good ones and the bad ones. And it was a grand total of about 300. It was 200 that rallied against the throne, and there was 101 that defended. So you got this 101 defending the throne of heaven against these 200. That's why they say he took a third um, of the armies of heaven with him. He didn't take a third of the armies. He took the 300 which was a third of what they call your royal guard, which was a total of 900. The reason there was more involved in the conflict is because the rest of them was protecting the king of heaven and the rest of the galactic council. So in order to, um, in order to keep the war in heaven under wraps where it didn't infect multiple galaxies and multiple species within creation, it was concealed here on earth and only certain ones knew what was taking place in the background. All roads lead to Rome and all roads in Rome lead to the Vatican and all wickedness leads to the basement. I know which room. I'm going to have to straighten it out because I told somebody I would move heaven and earth. Well, while I was going through the dark night of the soul, I was clearing out nine higher dimensions. I was clearing that shit out um, on a spiritual level as the, the warrior warriors. Could nobody else do it? And so they thought that I was going through mental issues. I was, I was off my rocker. Um, I was falling to pieces. You got damn right. Because when you fighting a spiritual war of that magnitude, you ain't can't function down here with these regular motherfuckers doing this dumb shit. It don't work like that. So now I done work from nine down to four, which leaves one, the third dimension. This third dimension fixed position reality where um, they all know I'm here. They all know I'm going to fix it. Been knowing I've been coming. Been preparing for me to get here. Preparing for me to wake up while I was here. Farrakhan gave a lecture a couple years ago. Because like, apparently I wasn't moving on the time frame. They wanted me to move on. And he told me, <laughs> you need to find out what your purpose is before you get up out of here. See, everybody thought he was just having a general talk to everybody. But he what? He was talking to one person. He said, you need to find out what you, what you here for your purpose is he said the road is hard <laughs> and the struggle is great but you got to find your purpose before you get out of here I said, yeah i do so i did but he didn't already know nor did tupac see 
we don't realize there's a lot of sacrifice goes into one person developing. These self-sacrifices are the greatest sacrifices you can give. And because of the sacrifice of one, for the benefit of the many, many people decided when they begin to wake up is, we're going to help him. We're going to make sure everything is in order so he cannot fail. Because these rotten motherfuckers laid all this dirt down and only one person took the weight. And so you see the Last Supper before the so-called crucifix. The crucifix is not what y'all were told. It was actually um, 